start this off, I'd like to say that I was hesitant to do this series. I didn't know if the interest was going to be warranted to make such a series. The FF11 I played from the beta PS2 to PC release to when I stopped at the launch of Abyssia and my subsequent return in March 2016 is, as some would say, winding down and the population is a fraction it once was. The first part is debatable. There's no new expansions coming out, but the game is still receiving updates. The second part is fact, however, as sad as it is. It is a mere sliver of the peak population it was. But there is no denying that those that still play, have just returned, have just discovered, or left and only have nostalgia hold this game dear to them and are mostly a loyal and devoted group. My only thought was if the mobile version is successful at all, this can be cross-compatible and be a terrific resource. What made me want to do this in the first place was seeing people struggle with names in the game while watching videos, and even when I was a heavy player back in the day. Heck, even I'm guilty as charge. My background is that I have been learning the Japanese language off and on for almost 20 years, though I am by no means fluent. I do know many rules and odd intricacies that show up, and I have a good list of people to draw from for help in that area if needed. So, to accomplish this, I wanted to use the original Japanese text for this. The reason for this is, other than the simple, well, duh, they made it, is the Japanese language is when converting non-native Japanese words to Japanese, break down the pronunciation into an easily pronounceable form using their mostly consonant vowel or vowel consonant vowel setup. There are a few exceptions to this I'll bring up when they arrive, and I hope that not only will it help to make things easier to pronounce, but understand why some things are like they are. This is very helpful when it comes to the fact that many things in Vanadil are borrowed from many cultures mythologies and histories. I will try not to rely too heavily on Wikipedia, but some things like culture's myth mythoses can't be helped unless it's me corralling the old encyclopedia sets in my parents' storage. When it comes to some things, I will try to get as close to the original source pronunciation and definition as possible. An example of this would be for Norse mythological categories using the Icelandic pronunciation, as it is the closest to the Old Norse in use today. Others like the Pseudo-French in Sandoria or the Vedic Sanskrit, I hope to might be able to enlist an expert to help out, so I might get it right. So that's a great opportunity for you, as the viewer, to share your knowledge on the subject, and we can all benefit, benefit and learn, and really, this is about learning. For the format, my main thought is to break the content into four main categories. Places, people, items, and the abstract. The first three are self-explanatory. The last will be those that don't fit into those three. I envision abstract being a more in-depth discussion into specific subjects as well. An example would be discussion on the pronunciation of Bastok, or how the main three cities are culturally set up, and what they mirror in our own world or background on mythological, cultural, and religious references, and how they fit in Vanadil. So, as a test, I wanted to do a quick single shot of one person, Rampir, place, Sarmug, and item, Mjolnir, to give a rough idea on how I perceive this series to be like. From there, I can get a reaction, I hope, and suggestions to improve the series. There is a massive amount of mount to cover, so I may leave some things by the wayside, like bit NPCs that aren't really used, items in places that are pretty self-explanatory, etc. To augment that, I hope to have you, the audience, request topics to cover. With that being said, let's get started with the test trilogy. Our first topic is a place. Let's head to Sormug Champagne. Sormug is a made-up name, but the name itself has meaning nonetheless. The Saur in the name is pronounced like that in Dinosaur, and that seems to reference the Saurmug skink, the crazy little dinosaurs that they are. I guess you can throw in the axe beak as well, since even though they're classified as birds in the game, are rather lizard-like in appearance. Genya in Japanese means wilderness. The use of Genya is traded to Champagne. 
No, not that champagne. This one. They are pronounced the same, but the dictionary definition of this champagne, an area of open countryside or battlefield. Given Van Adelen history, the champagne is referencing the many battles waged in this area. Moving on to the late great King Rampir R. Doragil. Lots of things associated with King Rampir, and his lore is found on many sites. The Doragil lineage was responsible for the Chateau d'Orgil, and Rampir is entombed in the southern part of East Ronfair, where the dragon Vertra guards his body. Vertra we will go into at another time. And lastly, we have Mjolnir. As some people know from the Marvel comics and most recently Marvel movies, it is pronounced Mjolnir in Icelandic. Mjolnir is the hammer wielded by Thor, the Norse god of thunder. The hammer was given to Thor by his father, Odin, leader of the Norse gods. Odin will be a discussion for a later time, as, as you can see in the process to upgrade the relic mall to Mjolnir, Thunder Element is attached to its stats, the obvious homage to Thor. So that should do it for this test. I hope you liked it. Next up is, well, I still have to compile a list and where to start. These are going to take some time to do, but I'm leaning towards starting with the NPCs and Bastox since it'll probably be an easy way to start out. So hit subscribe so you'll know when I do get the next one out, and thanks for watching!